Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the fourth video in the Xcode SwiftUI workshop series. And in this video, we'll be completing the How Much application. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. You can continue on from where you left off in the last video using the same project or you can download the completed project from the last video from the link in the description. What we want to do now is that when the user taps the Calculate button, present a view that will come up partway from the bottom of the screen and display the totals, tip, and individual portion owed. So for this, we're going to need to create a new SwiftUI view. So we can right-click on the navigator and choose New File, and from there, make sure you choose Swift UI View. Name it Tonals View. Since we're creating view structs, it's a good practice to use the word view as part of the name of the file. This view will receive three things from our main content view, and that'll be a total as a double, the tip percentage as an integer, and the number of people, which is another int. These values will not be changing, so we can use a let or a constant to define them. Now I know that our total in our first view is a string, so we'll have to be careful to convert it to a double before we pass it into this view. Well, the preview provider is complaining because it needs some sample values when it creates the view for previews on the canvas. So if you place your cursor in between the parentheses, for the total view, and then press Control and Spacebar, you'll get some code completion, so you can simply tap Enter on the keyboard, and then provide some sample values. Now the way that we're presenting the view here for our preview in the canvas is the same way that we're going to present it from our content view when we present our sheet. The only difference will be that the three values will be our state variables that we have in our content view. So we can now design our view because we have some sample data to view in our preview canvas. First though, let's create some computed properties to generate the tip and total amounts so that our view can be much more readable. The first will be a computed property called tip amount. It's going to be a double. And from this then we can calculate the tip amount by multiplying the total by the tip percentage and then divide by 100. Well, the problem is that you can't multiply a double, which is our total, by an integer, which is the tip percentage. So we can convert the integer to a double like this, and then we can divide by 100. We can create two more computed properties to represent the total amount and the individual portion. The total amount is a double, that is a sum of the total and the tip amount. The portion, which is another double computed property, is another double that's found by dividing the total amount by the number of people. But again, because total amount is a double and number of people is an integer, we'll need to convert the number of people into a double. Now we have everything we need to present our view. And we're going to use a other container layout called a grid layout that was introduced in iOS 16. I have a full video on this topic, so make sure that you view it for more detail. First, I'll replace the text view with a grid view container. Inside there, I'm going to create four rows, each with two columns. So we can use a grid row as a container and provide the two columns as text views for each of the columns that we're going to present in our grid. We're not going to worry about formatting yet. For the first text view, I'm going to present the string original bill. And then for the second, which is the second column, I'm going to display the total. But this is not a string, so we'll need to use string interpolation to display this number. Again, let's not worry about formatting yet. 
Then I'm going to copy this and repeat for the remaining three rows. And I can change that static string to represent the original bill, the tip, the total, and the individual portion. And using string interpolation each time to display the total and calculated values. We can set the alignment of the first column in a grid for all rows by setting that on the first view or column in any one of our grid rows. Similarly, we can do that for the second column. So we'll do that on our first grid row. We'll apply a grid column alignment on our original build text string and apply that to the leading edge. For the second column then, where we have numbers, we want that to be aligned to the trailing edge. So we'll set a grid column alignment to trailing. This aligns each one of the rows of the first column to the left edge and to the right edge for the second column. There are a couple of different ways to format our money as currency. In iOS 15, a new format was introduced for strings in a text view. We can simply provide a format argument and then specify currency as the format by providing the country code, like CAD for Canada. It recognizes that then and uses a dollar sign because our currency in Canada is dollars. I don't like this, however, because it adds CA in front of the money. This is a Canadian thing, though, and if you use USD for US dollars, that wouldn't appear. And as you'll see, my simulator is defaulting to a US. So if your app is being sold in other countries, though, you'll want the currency to be displayed using their locale. So what you can do is create another constant outside the body. I'm going to call it identifier. You can set this identifier to be the locale.current.currency.identifier. And this will try to recognize the identifier for the locale set on the iPhone. And it's an optional value. So we'll use nil coalescing to just assign an empty string to unwrap the value. Well, now you can assign that identifier in place of our fixed string. And you'll see that now the CA is removed. And as you see, my install must be set for the US. And then we can copy and paste this format for the remaining strings. This is looking better, but we can increase the size of the text by applying a font to the entire grid. So we'll apply the font of a modifier of dot title, and that increases the size of each one of our text views. And we can also increase the spacing between columns by adding a horizontal spacing argument to the grid. I want this to be at the top of the view that gets presented, so I'm going to embed the entire grid in a V stack. And then as the last view in the V stack, I'll add a spacer that is going to push that grid up to the top. Like the first view, we can add a title if we embed the V stack inside a navigation stack. Then I can add a navigation title modifier to the V stack using the string amount owing. Now presented views don't normally have this large title. So we can make that into a small or inline navigation title by applying a navigation bar title display mode modifier using the inline option. Well, now that we have that view, we can return to our content view to present this modal sheet. Well, a sheet modifier can be attached to any view in the view hierarchy, but I like to associate it with the view that's providing the action to present it. And that'll be our calculate button. And there are two different overloads to create a modal sheet. But the simplest one is to present it when a Boolean property is set to true. Well, we already have that calculate button that does that for us. It sets the Boolean calculate button to true. So to this button, I'm going to create a sheet modifier and use the is presented overload. 
and it's going to be bound to the calculate property, which means we'll have to use the dollar sign. Then what this does is pass on the calculated value, which is true, onto the new presented sheet. And when that view gets dismissed, it'll automatically reverse the value and set it back to false. Well then, now that we've presented the sheet, what do we want to present? Well, that's our totals view. And it's going to require that we pass in three different values. They're not going to be changing, so they're not bound, so no dollar sign. Total, however, is a string, and our view is expecting a double. So we'll convert it to a string using double. And remember, it's going to produce an optional because it may not work. And if so, then in that case, we'll use no coalescing once more to provide the number zero as an alternative. If the conversion to double does work, then it'll use the converted value, otherwise it'll use zero. The tip percentage and number of people are both integers, so we can pass them along as is. We can test this now and enter our total bill. I'll select a 10% tip, and I'll specify two people in our party. And when I tap on Calculate, the total pops up from the bottom and replaces the entire screen. That's not exactly what I want. I want this to only appear partway up the screen. So we can apply what is known as a presentation detent modifier to the view and specify that we only want to allow a medium detent, which means it's going to come up about 50%. So a presentation detent modifier requires that we pass in a set of options. And since we only want to use medium, our set will contain only a single element. You can watch my entire video on presentation details here. I'll leave a link in the description. Well, let's see how it's looking now. Again, we can enter a total, pick a percent, specify the number in your party, and click on Calculate. This is looking better, but still a lot of white space. So I want to add an image here. Right now our app has no icon, and our totals view does not have the image that we saw in the preview image. So you should have two assets available to you from the resources provided. The App Store 1024.png is a 1024 by 1024 image and that's a required size that you can use for an app icon. So in Xcode, you can open the Assets folder, and then select the App Icon item, and then simply drag that image from your Assets folder onto the placeholder in the center. I've also provided another smaller version that's got some rounded corners, and its size is 256 by 256, and it's called myportion.png. I can simply drag that onto the left below the app icon, and it'll create a new item for you in the Assets folder using that name as the name of the asset. Well, let's use it. In the Totals view, I'm going to add above the spacer in the VStack an image view. And the string I'm going to use is the asset name my portion. This creates an image full size, but that's maybe a bit big, larger than I want it. It's a 256 by 256 image, and I want to specify a frame that's going to have a width of 150. But nothing changed because we have to precede the frame with a modifier that tells our image that it can be resized, which is the resizable modifier. Well, this isn't good because we only specified the width, and the height has grown to take the entire remaining space available. Well, we could fix this in two ways. We could specify a height in the frame being 150. But that's because we actually know our image is a square. But what if it wasn't square? If it's some other proportion, it would look strange. 
So we can solve this by just removing that height option in our frame and applying another modifier called scaled to fit. But just one more test. But this time I'm going to run it on the simulator. Once more, I'll specify my total. I'll provide a generous 18% tip. And it's going to be split among three people. Calculate. Nice. That's the look I'm looking for. And when I exit back to the home screen, I see my app now has its own icon. Well, that's it for this tutorial. And in the documentation, I've suggested some bonus exercises for you, along with some solutions. In the next set of videos, we'll tackle the second application, which is called Bucket List. And this is going to allow you to add and store a list of places or things to do before you die. I hope you stay with the course and continue on with this workshop.